Welcome back to Technograms Games, and today I'm going to bring you a chess improvement video. Uh, it's a series I'm going to start doing where I bring you some games where I feel like either I really demonstrated some improvement that I was looking to do, or what a lot of these videos are going to be are areas where I made some cool plays, but then followed up with some not so great plays. This particular game went quite well for me. Um, I do want to be clear, though, at the beginning that uh, according to the chess.com accuracy, my accuracy is only about 82%. So this isn't a game where I'm sort of showing you how perfectly I played from beginning to end, but more that I was able to successfully implement a strategy that I came up with uh, that sort of institutes some learning from the most recent books I've been reading, which are Simple Chess by Michael Steen and Mastering Chess Strategy um, by Helston. Uh, and in those books, most recently, I was reading about different color complexes and how to make bishops good and bad and really trying to work with that. So let's go ahead and take a look at where we're at. So we're looking at a Sicilian. I generally play the knight orf. Things are looking like maybe they're going to go knight orfy. And then my opponent plays this. And this is a really weird move that I haven't seen before, or not that I recall as being a normal move I've studied or anything. But... Immediately, my brain started going, and I was like, okay, so if these two pawns have both been played, what that means is that this square, the d4 square, is incredibly weak because there are no pawns to be able to kick anything on there. Yes, this knight is here, but this is an, also where my head went. I can just go like this, and yes, very early, I'm trading off a bishop for a knight, um, and it's unclear whether this position will become open or not. But it's certainly something I'm thinking about, that if I get rid of this guy, what's guarding this? And so with that in mind, I'm thinking two things. First of all, knight's going to jump in there. Uh, and also I go to immediately, instead of a really uh, clear e5 play, which I think would be fine, um, I decided to feed Keto because look at this diagonal. It just looks so beautiful. I just got done reading about long diagonals. And we've got our knight that we get to stick in here. And this just looks so lovely. Um, it's kind of funny to me that the computer is like, it might look lovely, but it's not. So whether or not this is the right move, I was happy that I sort of noticed this square complex happening. All right, so my opponent sort of plays a regular developing move. I'm going after my plan here. And here's where I think my opponent shows that this plan can kind of unravel because my opponent could just push d4 here. Mm, if I take then this whole plan of like locking this bishop into a bad bishop behind these square sort of falls apart. So in some ways, I think my opponent is helping me with this plan. Um, but here we are, our plan being to jump in there. What's interesting is that the, the computer is already seeing that this trade is going to be a good one for me. Um, and then the, once the opponent goes here, especially, that's when I'm like, okay, not only is this, this, this square weak, They've already moved the D-pawn. They don't want to have to immediately move it again. So this became, to me, a real moment of not just maybe I should think about trading this bishop who, you know, by definition is, is going to be my good bishop, right? If we're going to have this pawn structure, this is the light-squared bishop. Our pawns are on the dark squares. This is going to be our mo more mobile bishop. But it just seemed like such a good trade for me. And so my opponent weakens their pawn structure, to prompt me to do the trade that I was going to do at some point anyway. And now look at this bishop. This bishop is the very definition of a bad bishop. All the pawns are on white squares. The bishop can do just about nothing. Um, so, so this whole game, I'm going to be thinking, how do we make this bishop bad? How do we keep him bad? And how do I not allow that bishop to come to life? I had a real difficult time of like... Do I make this pawn move to e5? This bishop is so great. I didn't want to cut down this diagonal, but I was definitely always thinking like, mm, okay, we got to be aware of this pawn push. It doesn't work right now. It gives up a pawn, um, but we have to be aware that at some point they could try to wake this bishop up essentially by pushing that pawn. Okay, so we continue. Boom, put my knight on this amazing square. Um, nothing's going to remove them, not even considering for a moment this trade, right? Like I could trade knight for bishop, not, not even on the radar. 
this bitch is a terrible bishop. This knight is awesome. This is the very defini definition of when you have a good knight versus a bad bishop. All right, so they bring their knight out for development. I go ahead and develop my knight, just sort of basic things. And then now they're they're looking at this and like, all right, all right, this knight is really, really good. Um, we're going to need to take him. I, I, this knight has a plan of going like there, right? And so this knight is looking to end up there, um, doing some good stuff. But uh, in addition to everything else, I really want this pawn or this square, D4, not to be occupied by a pawn. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure that's the case by allowing my bishop to, to take there when they eventually do take. All right, so now this point, castled. We got pieces where we want them. We make the trade in the center. Now we have this bishop who is very influential, looking awesome, um, having some reach. And we have this knight who's probably going to just hop in here. Um, not not going to trade for this bishop, right? We've already said we're not trading for that bishop, but but in a good spot. Um, and now, so now they're they're on the bishop, and we have the question: Do we do we make this trade? And and the answer is no. This <laughs> this is an amazing diagonal. What? Why would I give up? Um, this bishop for this knight who's way back there not doing much and then also sticking a pawn on our glorious d4 square not not even a possibility all right we're putting our knight in a really good spot um and now i feel like this is where i was a little lost in this position right it's like okay my position is awesome i've got a beautiful knight i've got a wonderful diagonal their bishop is garbage. Their knight, look at the squares it can go to. Like, it's not doing much either. If we could just freeze the game and say, whoever has the better position here wins, I, I win. Um, and this is where it gets a little complicated. And so I decided, like, well, um, let's try to take advantage of the fact that we have all this by maybe opening up the A file, right? So if I go here and I go there, um, if they take and I take, that's pretty good. Uh, suddenly the A file is open to us. They'll probably go like that, or, or if they do, we can go here. Bottom line is we should be able to make some things happen over here. All right. Um, interestingly, we have some cool moves with uh, queen to a5, and we'll see this again with even bigger impact later that I just don't see. Again, this isn't a, this isn't a game about how I played perfectly from beginning to end. It's more a game about how I was able to keep this bishop as a bad bishop, keep mine as a, as a really effective bishop, and, and use these knights. So they're chasing the knight back, but look, we can get to the square pretty easily, right? And suddenly, this knight is going to go from good to even better. So this is all fine. This pawn push, this kind of feels like a little bit of desperation for my opponent. Like, they're not really sure what they should be doing. Um, this is a really strong move because... Let's, let's look at this knight. Where's this knight going to go? Right? Like, no, no, uh, no, no, there. <laughs> Either knight has to go there or they have to protect the knight. So I, I decided to put my knight in a good spot. Um, again, now we uh, have a really good game going here. All the things we had going on before are still going for us. I decided to bring the bishop to an even more influencing spot, hitting that knight thinking that the knight probably gets driven back to a pretty terrible square. They do move the knight back to a terrible square. And at this point, I'm just looking at this game and going, wow, like this is, this may be the greatest game I've ever played, right? <laughs> like everything has just come together. The knight is back there. That is a terrible bishop. Like everything is so glorious. Um, and here is a really interesting spot uh, because we have a lot happening here tactically that I just totally missed where like this is hitting this with check. So there's a line here that, that I did not see at all until um, computer, computer analysis came in that I can go here. And if they take here, uh, this, is, this is actually uh, gonna be checkmate. <laughs> as shocking as that is, it's not just taking uh, with check, right? We've got the bishop covering that, the rook's covering that, check, it's checkmate. Didn't see that at all. Wish I would have. I could I could have talked about what a glorious game this was. Instead, this is not a perfectly played game by any stretch. I go here. Reason being, connect these rooks so that I can continue to control um, the open file here or have a lot of influence on it, if not controlling it. 
take some trades. And then here, um, computer doesn't love this, but my thought was, it looks to me like I've got a pretty good attack over here, right? This guy's buried in the corner. This guy's attacking. This guy's attacking. We can take a couple moves, get the queen involved. And so let's just lock down the other side of the board now that we don't have rooks. When I had rooks, I was like, okay, let's open it up and I can use my rooks over there uh, because I have more space. I have more you know, piece connectedness. But now that the pieces are off the board, I decided to close it down, bringing the bishop into play. And this was a big moment. Um, they go here looking, I don't know where they're looking to go, to be honest. Where are they going to go? There's not a lot of spots, but at least, at least this bishop has gone from utter garbage to it's doing something and we're not going to have that. We're just not going to have that. This whole game has been about controlling this bishop. Where's this bishop going to go? Every spot is covered. Go back from whence you came. Get out of here. You don't get to be involved in this game. All right, just continuing to pressure on. Um, not the best move for the king. And in fact, this is not the best move either. I should have brought my uh, queen up to there, but whatever. Uh, we're coming in. All the pieces are getting active. Interesting that this was um, a big mistake. So there's the attack here. My theory was just get him out of the way, be able to bring the queen in. Um, which is what I, I will do next is bring the queen in. But I, I thought it would be better to do it this way. It is a good point, though, from what the computer says, that if we just bring the queen in now, the queen's backing up. We, we retain all the pressure we have on this pin. Um, the way I played it was a lot weaker. And in fact, it gives away a lot of the advantage until our opponent moves there and just gives us back our advantage. Um, then they go there, which is... Fine. Um, apparently, this is a blunder, and I should have just come in here now. Which, I don't know, it doesn't make a ton of sense to me because of the trade, but I guess this this is probably just going to be um, too much to escape from here and then maybe here. Yeah, and so we, we, we're, we're bringing all this pressure on if we do this this way. I didn't calculate all this out. It was a blitz game. We go through, and then that um, is a problem. So by, by moving the queen there, now we get this pin, um, and then that pin is going to win a piece. They make a mistake there. I think they thought. I think they just sort of forgot that this was going to be with check. They were thinking they were counterattacking. Uh, so the point is not that I won this game. The point is not that I played a played a perfect game. The point is we're going to go back to the beginning. That right from the beginning, right from move three. I identified that there was some stuff going on here, that there was this interesting color complex, and I was able to, the entire game, take advantage of this diagonal and shut down this bishop, and, and also through that process, ended up shutting down this guy. And so I was able to keep this pressure on all game. Now, did my opponent have some misplays in there that, that sort of allowed that to happen more? Definitely. Did I miss some stuff? Definitely. But it was just one of those moments in my own development as a chess player where I could kind of look to and say, I am getting better. I am taking in some of these concepts that I've been reading about and applying them in my games. Not in a like, a, oh, that just came about. That's awesome. But like identifying them before they're happening. Like I was very proud of that play to enable that weakness uh, and to be able to exploit it. So it's little things like that. And I guess the point of this video is that's what I think we have to really latch onto in our process, right? It's not about, did you win and lose that game? It's, did you, were you able to take the learning that you've been doing and use it effectively and deploy it? I'm gonna make another video um, soon that's similar to this, where I played this such a great move, such a great move, and then two moves later, I made such a blunder and lost the game. Um, but I was still was able to, to take away from that game, like, ah, the learning. Like, it was a move that I wouldn't have made a month ago that uh, I really learned from just reading and watching games and really internalized um, some stuff. So, that's all for today. I hope you learned something from this game, and I'll see you next time on Tiny Grams Games.